Hello everyone, Nate Vincent here with FCP Euro. We're going to be doing a SAX performance coilover install along with some 034 camber plates on this Mark 7 GTI. Let's get started. All right, step one, we're going to take this wheel off with the 17 millimeter socket, nice small uh, thin wall so we don't damage the wheels. All right, real quick, we're doing a coilover install on this. We just had our first uh, track day with this where we set the baseline at Lime Rock. I just want to point out the wear on this tire. These camber plates that we're installing right here are going to allow the wheel to camber in a little bit more and use that tire, tire patch more efficiently on track. All right, first things first, now that we have the wheel off, we are going to disconnect the bracket that lives on this, uh, this upright here, and we're also going to disconnect the sway bar. The bracket is held on with a 10 millimeter bolt, and the sway bar is held on with a 18 millimeter. We're removing the bracket right now from the upright, 10 millimeter. This allows just a little more movement in the suspension. Move that out of the way and put the bolt back in so we don't lose it. All right, so now we're going to disconnect the sway bar. Sway bar is held on with an 18 millimeter nut. And there's also a, a hex inside that if the ball joint starts to spin. Sometimes you need to pull down on the sway bar to remove tension and just pop it out. Move this to the side. 12 point SP10. We're going to remove the axle flange. While you're doing this, you may have to stick a screwdriver in the veins of the, of the rotor to keep this from rotating, or just hold it with your hand. Just don't pinch your hand between the rotor and the caliper. And the rotate to have access, I just put a screwdriver in the rotor. Spin it around. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna counter hold with a triple square. This is an SP14. I'm not gonna spin with this side though. I'm just gonna counter hold here and I'm gonna rotate the nut right off. And I'm just gonna spin this out by hand. All right, next what we're gonna do is we're going to loosen up the ball joint. So we have three, we have three bolts right here that connect the lower ball joint to the control arm. We're gonna loosen these three up. So here, we're gonna use a 16 millimeter socket. And we're gonna remove the um, lower ball joint from the control arm. So now using a small, small pry bar, we're gonna separate the control arm from the ball joint. Now our control arm is free. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to split this upright right here. What I wanna notice is See this little tab here? This is an anti-rotation tab that's actually attached to the strut tube itself. And so we want to avoid that, and we also don't want to go on top or on bottom of that because then we can't slide it through. So we're going to take this drift here, and we're going to go right here on the edge of it so we can allow it to slide through and separate these two so it opens it up. So you're going to have a good friend come over, and he's going to just kind of put your hand right here, right there, and right here. And just, you don't have to actually put any pressure on it, but or no, right here. Just hold on to that because as soon as I come get this thing spread, the chance there's a chance that this could drop down. So So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna take the top and the bottom of the rotor, and we're gonna wiggle up and down as we pull down and separate it from the strut. There it comes, I can feel it moving now. And we're free. So, after struggling with this, 
we found the best way to do it is use a transmission jack, a wood block, something like that on the rotor. If you go inboard the rotor, everything's gonna wanna fall out and you're gonna stretch your uh, ABS signal and your brake lines, stuff like that. If you put this on the rotor and let it fold towards the car, you're good. So we're not gonna, we're gonna try to keep this drift in place. We don't wanna knock that out because that's obviously separating it and we'll have to redo that. Um, now we're gonna go up top, we're gonna loosen up the three bolts under the cowl that hold this in. Um, and then obviously you wanna make sure when you get the last one, that's all that's gonna be holding the strut in. So this whole strut assembly is gonna drop out. So make sure you have your hand on it and you're gonna catch it before it drops. So there's three bolts that hold the strut within the strut housing right here. So to get access to this, we need to remove this plastic panel. So there's a clip here. We're gonna take that off, set it aside. And then there's also this rubber seal here. So now we can just flip this up and you can see we have access to the three 13 millimeter bolts that hold the strut in place. So like I said before, we're gonna loosen these up. What I like to do is break them all loose. So make sure they're all loose and then I leave one in. So I'm gonna leave this one in and I'm gonna take these two out. If we just took them all out, the, thing would, the entire strut would just drop out. So we don't wanna avoid that. One, two. And now the third one, I'm gonna do it by hand. Move this stuff. Oh no. And the third one, I'm gonna come up under here, I'm gonna grab the strut, I'm gonna lift up on the strut, and I'm gonna loosen up the bolt. Now once that bolt is out, two hands under here, I can lower the strut right out. Voila. Stock strut removed. All right, so now that we have the strut tube removed from the car, we're going to take this apart to get the bearing out of this. We're gonna use the 034 top mount which adds an additional amount of camber, as you can see from the offset here. So this is adding about 1.4 degrees of negative camber to the car. Um, but to utilize the system, we have to use the strut bearing that's, that's in this car. So we're gonna take this part, get the strut bearing out of there, and then we're gonna assemble the new coilovers. So to do that, we're going to put these spring compressors on the spring carefully. Should always be really careful working with springs so they have a lot of energy under tension and we'll put one on the other side as well. Now we're only going to pull down these spring tensioners just enough to know that we've removed tension from this top mount. Uh, there's no reason to add extra compression to the spring. So I can already feel the spring wobbling around in there a little more. So I know that we're close to removing tension. I'll show you how to tell. So you can see almost right there, you can almost see a full gap right there. We're getting pretty close. So I'm just gonna pull a little more on it to make sure that comes to a full gap. And then we should have no tension in this, or uh, no tension in this strut housing. You can see there's a full gap there. I could put a piece of paper through there all the way around. So at that point, now I'm gonna take an impact. I'm gonna loosen up this top nut. All right, so what we're gonna do here now, this is spinning. We're gonna take a 21 with a much of a, as much of a flange as possible. We're gonna get in there and we're gonna put a Allen key socket in there. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can actually take a socket like this with a really, really big channel locks or really big vice grips and then you can go down with a hex key if you need to. All right, so now we have our 21 millimeter with a flange on it and we have a seven millimeter um, Allen key on a socket. So we're just gonna hold the Allen key um, solid while we turn the nut off. Obviously you see the whole thing's rotating, but that doesn't really matter. So now that I'm coming close to the end of the threads, it's a good time to check. Um, you can see there's, there's no tension in this. Nothing pushing up on this. Um, if that's under tension, obviously as soon as this nut comes off, this, all of these parts can come springing up. You don't want that to happen. So what I like to do when I take these apart is list or is line everything up so you make sure you get the assembly right. So first we have a nut. Second, we have the entire strut mount with an insert. And then last, we have a strut bearing and the uh, protection tube, which we're not gonna use. And we have the spring and the strut. from the old assembly is the strut bearing, which is this piece right here. 
you can pick this up, you can see there's actually a bearing inside this. This is what allows this, the strut to rotate as you turn the steering wheel. So grab that, and then we're gonna come over here. And so here's our front, our front damper. First things first, what we wanna do is to avoid having any spring tension as we assemble this thing, we want the, the adjustments to be bottomed all the way out. So we're gonna bottom these things all the way down to the bottom. And that just avoids the spring being in tension when we put the top assembly together. So the next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna grab our front spring. So the flat side, the, the narrow skinny part of the coils is gonna go down. So we assemble that down. And you can see the reason I, I screwed this down here is now we have a little bit of room to work on the top. I take the nut off. And now we take our 034 camber plate and our shut bearing. So you might want to note there's a little tab right here and also on the strut bearing there's a little tab. So you want to make sure those two line up. You want them to line up just like that. Now this assembly is ready to go on. This tab goes inward. We want the camber to go inward. So this is going to look like this. So now you can see we actually don't need spring compressors for this because we have a built-in spring compressor basically. Um, we can push down on this, we can put our nut on it and tighten this down. All right, to tighten the entire assembly down, we're gonna use a 22 millimeter deep socket on an impact. Make sure everything's tight. We're looking good. All right, so now it's back to the car to install. All right, so here we are. We have the coilover installed. I set the ride height to what I estimated would be the right height, ride height and recorded it so I can set the other side to the same. Um, we'll get further into that when we actually go and corner or show you guys how to corner balance a car uh, or what's involved in corner balancing a car, I should say. Um, right here, you can see we have a the 034 mount, it's all tight. Um, they give us nice hardware to go with this, so we're gonna use these new um, bolts because the threads into the aluminum into at least two sides of them are not, are blind holes. This, this is all the way through, this stops and this stops. So if you use the full length um, Volkswagen hardware that came with it, you're gonna bottom out in that hole and not be able to tighten this down. So you gotta make sure to use the 034 hardware. Um, aside from that, I think we're ready to go. We're, we're ready to install this thing. Oh, other quick note, um, these are not equal distance. So the distance between these two holes and the distance between these two holes is not the same. So the narrower ones are gonna go inboard and the, the longer distance one is gonna go outboard. So regarding adjustable damping, um, the way this is, is, as you can see, there's a minus this way, and there's a plus the other way. When you get to the last click right here, this is the last click, you'll see the stops. So right here, this, the first time it clicks is considered setting one. This would be two, three, four, and five. There's 20 settings on this, 20 being the harshest, one being the softest. We're gonna start at five, and we're gonna show you how to set these as well in a different video. First things first, we go up and we align it Top. And you really just want to get it aligned and get one bolt hole started. So you can see I found one bolt hole. I'm going to work on just getting, getting the bolt on that one. And that will kind of give me a reference point. So now the other two, I'm just going to loosely put in so all the stress isn't on one, one mount. going to slide this coilover strut tube into the knuckle here. This time we need to be a little more cautious because remember we have the damping adjuster right on the bottom here. We don't want to damage that. That has a, actually a little piston rod that goes all the way up to the to the piston here and, and makes the adjustments. Um, and it's all aluminum. We just want to be a little more cautious. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually move the mount that I've created with this jack stand. Move that out of the way. Let this kind of sag down a little bit. And now we're going to carefully realign this. So being very ginger with my movements to make sure nothing gets damaged. <clears throat> and now the best way to move it is to wiggle the rotor top to bottom. All right, so here we are. What, we, what I did was we bolted the strut in the top and then we set it in to the knuckle as far as we could. That's so we didn't have enough force to get the knuckle to go all the way up. So now we're up in the air with the transmission jack under here and we also reattached the bottom ball joints. 
to keep this whole thing from spreading out. Now I'm gonna go under and um, we're gonna see if we can spread this joint a little further and see if we can get this thing to go see all the way down to the bottom. So by putting some transmission or some tension on this strut with this transmission jack and then spreading this, we were able to seat the strut all the way down into the knuckle. So now we're gonna let this go and we're gonna put the pinch nut back in or pinch bolt. So again, this is the triple square coming from the side through and then 18 millimeter. So now we're gonna use a pry bar to seat this ball joint all the way. And we're gonna tighten the all right so now we're gonna reinstall the the fasteners holding the drive axle to the transmission so what i like to do is get two started all right now that the axle's been tightened down. Um, we're gonna reconnect our sway bar. And like I said, same way getting off, sometimes you have to put some tension on it, so put some upward tension on the bar. And get the uh, threaded portion through the mount on the coil level. All right, now the final step is just to button up your cowl. So pull this up, slide that down, and then you're gonna take your clip and clip the cowling down. And that is how you install coilovers. So first step to install your Sax Performance uh, rear coilover is to remove the wheel. I'm gonna use a 17 millimeter socket. Be careful that the wheel doesn't fall off. Step two, we're gonna remove this inner fender liner. We're gonna use a T20 socket, um, Torque T20. And I think we have almost like 10 or so of these. So just start one side and work your way around. And uh, when you pull this out, be careful, because there's gonna be a lot of dirt and debris behind it. So don't get your eyes in there, make sure you Kind of stand clear of it on the first pull. Pull that inner fender out. Like I said, it's gonna drop some dust, so stand back. And set this aside. All right, so now we have access to the top shock mount and the bottom shock mount. So the next step, we're going to remove the knuckle, the shock, and the sway bar from this lower control arm so we can drop it down and we can remove the spring and the shock. First, we're gonna need two 18 millimeter wrenches. Um, we're gonna remove the shock right here. Spinning the, the nut side, not the bolt side at first. And I'm gonna leave this in until I get the other two undone. Same thing on this, we have a nut on this side, bolt on this side, so I'm gonna counter hold the bolt side. I'm gonna spin the nut side. These are again, are both 18 millimeter. And last, we're gonna move the 13 that holds the sway bar to the lower control arm. By disconnecting the rear sway bar, we're, we're unlinking the connection between the right side and the left side of the vehicle. This will allow the left side of the vehicle, the side we're working on, to droop down further without affecting the other side. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our nice soft mallet and we're gonna knock the sway bar bolt through. And also sometimes if it gets stuck at the very end, you can always wiggle a sway bar. There's not that much energy on these sway bars, so. All right, sway bar is disconnected. The next step is to disconnect the shock absorber. So we're gonna send that through. Now this is gonna droop, so just be aware. The suspension is gonna wanna droop as soon as the bolt comes out. That spring is, is gonna be pushing this down. 
The shock absorber acts as a limiting, a limiting factor, not allowing the control arm not to go too far down. So now you can see. And the last thing we're gonna do, so we can actually pull this thing down and remove these two items, we're gonna pull this knuckle, knuckle bolt right out. I'm gonna use the drift here just because there's not a lot of access. And now I'm just gonna thread it out the other side. There we go. So I keep my, my hand on it, just allowed it not to, not to spring out and hit me in the face. So now we can pull the control arm down. It's disconnected from the sway bar, the shock, and obviously the spring come out now. And we can just pull the spring right up and out. All right, the next step is we're gonna remove the two 16 millimeter bolts that hold the shock mount and the entire shock in place. I'm use a deep socket on this one, give myself some leverage. All right, now holding the shock, I'm gonna remove the bolts. And one out, two out, and now the bolt will come out. Now that we've gotten the uh, rear damper, rear shock out of the car, um, we're gonna cut the uh, zip tie here and we can pull down. You can see that there is a bump stop on here. A lot of people are concerned about this. I wanna point out that this new Sax Performance Kit is actually gonna be mounted upside down, like this. So while this one has the skinny tube at the top, this one will have the thick tube at the top with the eyelet at the bottom. Another thing I'm gonna note is underneath this sealed up rubber bellow here is a bump stop already installed. So you do not need to steal this bump stop off your original setup and put it on. There is already a bump stop on the setup. The only thing we do have to steal from the setup is the dust cap on top. So we're gonna steal this dust cap, we're gonna pop it off, set it aside. And since we're using the 034 density line upper mounts, we're not gonna use this mount. If we were not using these mounts, we would reuse this mount. So now, assembly of the rear damper. So we're gonna take this rear damper. First thing we're gonna do, you're gonna notice that there's two spacers that are zip tied to the bottom. We're gonna cut those off. So we're gonna cut these off. One spacer, two spacer. These are both the same thickness, so it doesn't matter what side they go on. Now we have those removed, we're gonna set our damping setting. So as I did in the front, I set it to the fifth click in from soft, softest. That's where we're gonna start the rear. So I'm gonna back it all the way out by turning these counterclockwise until they do not click any longer. So right there was the last click. So I click, I rotate forward to my first click, click one, and then I count two, three, four, five. So now the rear and the front dampers are both set to the fifth click of 20. Now we're gonna install the top mount. So we take the 034 density line top mount and this is, this is pretty simple install. We just basically go right down onto the, onto the shoulder here. We take our lock nut and we thread it on. Um, and then I like to use an impact just to snug this down. Just be careful of your fingers. You don't want this thing to spin out of control. So now that we have the damper assembly ready to go, last things last, we're gonna cap it off with this nice dust cap. Pop that on. And here we are, we've got a full damper ready to go in. So the first things first is I'm gonna hang it from the top, but I'm not gonna mount the bottom just yet. Rear mount goes right up against these little steel tabs here. And we just thread it right in. Now using a 16 millimeter socket, we're gonna snug these down. All right, so the reason I didn't mount the bottom yet is because we still need to put the spring in and I still need to have the access um, to move the control arm down to mount that spring. So now we're gonna install the rear spring. So there's two parts of this rear spring, so now we have an adjustable ride height. We have the spring itself, and we have the adjuster. We've set the adjuster to the, the basically a third up from the minimum ride height right here. So we can also count threads. Right now we're just trying to get, a, get it basically a, an approximate for the height. Um, once we corner balance the car, we'll be more specific with it. The adjuster goes right up on this top spring nub. So it's gonna sit just like this, and it's gonna center itself and hold itself in place using the spring pressure itself. On the bottom here, we've actually, we've actually left the original spring pad in place. We do not use the top spring pad, but we do use the standard bottom spring pad. And I should also mention that the round side of the spring goes into the spring pad. The flat side of the spring goes up against the adjuster. So first things first, we're gonna put the spring and it kind of pops into this bottom spring pad and you can index it right there. We're gonna leave that there. Now we're gonna take the adjuster. Now I like to put the adjuster on the spring and then bring everything right up to where it's gonna sit. 
So the next step is we're gonna bring this up and I'm just gonna put this bolt through just to hold the assembly together. So remember, when we took this apart, the bolt was, in the, is, was actually from this side um, with the nut on this side. So we're gonna follow the same assembly procedure. You might have to wiggle the rotor or the, the suspension around a little bit to get it started. All right, so we're started there. Thread it in a couple to make sure it's centered. And then I'm gonna use a mallet and tap it through nice and soft. You notice I pause when I hit the other side just to make sure we're aligned. I'm gonna peek over here. I'm gonna wiggle this, this control arm up a little bit. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the shock. But remember, we have those two spacers we're gonna add in. So we take the bolt. The bolt went from the front to the rear. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start it and put one spacer on it, on one side. Now, pushing up on this whole assembly slightly, we're gonna get it started into the damper. Now pushing the damper forward, we're making room to put the spacer in on the other side. So let's get the spacer lined as closely as possible. You can see it falling into the hole. I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver just to fine tune its alignment. And then again, I'm gonna push up on the control arm and I'm gonna send it through. That's through. And then let's twist the control arm and send the bolt through. Control arm, arm, twist up. And we're through. So now I'm gonna take both the nuts and I'm just gonna put them on finger tight just so nothing gets loosened up. All right, so now the final part of this install is we wanna get the sway bar link installed. So as you can see, this coilover system is significantly, the overall length is a little bit shorter, so your overall wheel drop's not gonna be the same. And you can see this sway bar is actually pushed way, way down. Um, what we're gonna do is actually loosen up the other side in order to get this done, because the droop on the standard shock absorber is greater than the SAX performance kit, and so we're actually not, we're not able to align the sway bar. All right, so now the sway bar is disconnected on the other side. You can see we have full movement up and down of the sway bar, so we can get this nice, and aligned. And again, I believe this bolt came from the front to the rear. So we'll follow suit on the install. So we have our bolt is through. Now we're just gonna go tighten these three down. 13's on the sway bar and 18's on the other two. So just to double check, make sure everything's good and tight, especially the two important ones. And we are through on the actual damper installation. So now the final step is we're just gonna lower this car back down and we're gonna reinstall the fender liner. So now the final step is to reinstall the fender liner. I like to do a quick, take this thing outside and shake it out to get all the dirt out of it. Um, it's up to you, but it's a, good, it's a good time to clear it out. These things collect a lot of dust, add a lot of weight to the car, kind of make it messy in general, so. And when you install this, this slides into this rubber front cover right here. So you want to make sure it gets in there so it doesn't get caught in the tire as it rotates. And then just rotate it right up in place. And you can start installing the hardware. So now all of the Fasteners are finger tight. I'm just going to go through and snug them all up and we should be complete. That concludes installing a Saks Performance coilover with the 034 density line top mount to a Mark 7 Golf. Uh, this is a performance package, but this would be the same on a standard Golf um, as in many of the uh, MQB chassis cars.